Joining me now is the Attorney General of Minnesota, Keith Ellison. Keith, thanks so much for coming on the show. The Secretary of State is now challenging, is not challenging this ruling. What does that mean for voters? What's your message to them with four days left in the race? My message is vote as early as you can or vote on election day. Uh, my message is that we are going to stand up and make sure that every single ballot is counted. At this point, the uh, Eighth Circuit has ruled that the ballots must be segregated if they arrive after 8 p.m. on election night. Uh, and but, but we believe those votes will be counted and should be counted and must be counted. Uh, and we will litigate uh, to make sure that they are counted. Uh, at this point, uh, a appealing to the Supreme Court would mean going to uh, a, a new Supreme Court with a new justice. And uh, that would mean that it would be very difficult to predict what the outcome would be. So what we've decided to do is make sure the vote gets out and prepared ourselves to litigate to make sure every vote is, in fact, counted, which we are absolutely committed to. So how long do you expect the count to take in Minnesota? Do you anticipate any challenges to those mail-in votes that the state is being forced to set aside? Do you think you can get the count done fast? How long? Well, let me just say, when you say set aside, you're technically right. But I want people listening to realize they're going to be counted but then sequestered. Uh, and I expect that we're going to count very quickly. Uh, but I, to, to predict, honestly, Mehdi, I don't, I don't want to raise expectations because I really don't know. The fact is they're going to be yeah. counted as fast as we can, and uh, every vote will be counted. That's my, that's my pledge and commitment, and the Secretary of State, Steve Simon, is committed to the same thing. It isn't just the timing of the vote that's causing legal issues. There's also how people vote. Just today, an emergency appeal was filed with the U.S. Supreme Court challenging Minnesota's mask mandate at polling places. Do you expect that masks will be enforced on Tuesday, given we're in the midst of a pandemic? We are going to stand up for the health and safety of a Minnesotans, period, full stop. Anybody who's an anti-masker is a person fighting for the right to spread a deadly virus. This is extremely irresponsible, and I cannot possibly imagine how that is going to be as successful in court. I'll tell you this, we are fighting to save lives, we are fighting, fighting to protect health, and we're not going to stand by and let people spread COVID. The mask mandate is a legitimate reasonable measure to protect Minnesotans' lives in a spiking environment. And um, so there again, uh, we're going to stand up and fight for people's health and we're not going to back down. It's amazing that you have to fight for people's health. That's what America has come to in 2020. Uh, this month, the Washington Post reported a private security company is recruiting armed guards to watch polling places in states like yours in Minnesota. They've since backed down in Minnesota, but you did call it right. unwelcome. You promised to combat any kind of voter intimidation. There are militias in plenty of states all gearing up for Election Day. How do you plan to do that to stop voter intimidation in Minnesota? Well, the way we've been doing it is if we find out that they plan on uh, having guards at any polling place, we contact them, we investigate them, we tell them it is illegal, and we will sue them if we need to. It's not permitted. Don't do it. Just let people vote un unintimidated. Uh, people have a right to cast a ballot, and we don't need, and nor have we asked for the assistance of groups like Aegis Atlas, and they have uh, very responsibly agreed not to do it. So we expect them to keep their word. And, uh, and we want every other group to follow Aegis Atlas' example and not try to interfere with the, vet, with the voting on Tuesday or before. So talking of interfering in the voting, there's also the interference from on high. If, comes, if come Tuesday night, Trump decides to declare victory and refuses to wait on states like Minnesota to finish counting, what do you and your fellow Democratic attorneys general plan to do? Have you all been strategizing with each other? Is there going to be a common front? Is there a plan? We will be in court, uh, and the people of the United States can, can bet that uh, uh, the AGs who believe in free and fair elections will be challenging any effort to uh, interfere with the count and the, and the vote. Uh, that we have been working together, we intend to, but I wanna be clear, uh, we're not trying to tell people which way to vote. You can vote with any way you want, but we're, not, we're gonna make sure that people have their right to vote and that their vote is counted, no matter who tries to interfere it, up and in, including Donald Trump. 
Uh, switching gears, Attorney General, to the other big story of this year, police violence and protests against racism. Four officers have been charged in the death of George, George Floyd, which kicked off everything, uh, including one for murder. But time and again, we've seen black men and women be killed by police who are then never brought to justice. How do you intend in Minnesota to ensure justice in this case and avoid another Breonna Taylor situation when no one was held accountable for her death? Well, um, we have charged four officers who we believe there's probable cause to believe that uh, they, they should be charged with second degree murder and, uh, and manslaughter. The uh, defense attorneys filed a motion to dismiss and the court ruled that there was probable cause for these cases to be bound over for trial, which is set on March 8th. That case is proceeding to trial. We expect that there will be a robust defense but uh, on the prosecution side, we will present fairly clearly to the jury uh, that we, uh, the evidence we believe supports the charges. And then the jury will decide. Twelve fair-minded Minnesotans, uh, hopefully from Hennepin County, will, will make that decision. And, uh, we're, but our job as prosecutors is to present the evidence fairly, and we will do that. Um, and more than that, maybe I can't say because I don't want anybody to prejudge the facts in this case. We're trying the case to the jury, yes. not in the public court of public opinion. Well, one case which has kind of <laughs> caused a lot of controversy in Kentucky, I mentioned Breonna Taylor. Do you think your Republican counterpart in Kentucky, uh, Daniel Cameron, the AG there, handled the Breonna Taylor situation to the best of his ability? Because a grand juror accused him of using the grand jury as a shield to avoid accountability, as they weren't even given the option to consider homicide charges in that case. Well, when you ask me if he's handled it to the best of his ability, I would have to know what the, his ability is, and I don't know. So what I'll say is that um, from a distance, not having all the facts, um, I was a little bit surprised uh, and disappointed. Beyond that, I'm just going to withhold judgment. OK, uh, just on the wider issue, Bill Barr, the attorney general of the United States, did announce a civil rights probe into George Floyd's death. But according to The New York Times, Barr's DOJ quietly ended its investigation into the Tamir Rice case last year. Didn't even, didn't even tell the family. It also closed its Eric Garner case with no charges last year. Do you have any faith or confidence in AG Bill Barr when it comes to getting justice for black victims of police violence? Well, let me answer it this way. Our local U.S. attorney has been a cooperative partner, and I want to commend her. She's been attentive. She's been helpful. Her name's Erica McDonald. I have no complaints. Nationally, you know, the jury is very much out. I mean, look, the uh, Obama administration had a number of consent decrees trying to bring reform to a number of police departments, and Jeff Sessions and then Bill Barr have not uh, have, have dropped those uh, and, and not have, brought, have not brought any. And there still is a number of problems. The federal government could be a much more helpful partner, and I wish they would step up and help bring reform through the consent decree pattern and practice lawsuit. But until this point, they really have not done so. I can't complain locally, nationally. Uh, you look at states like Illinois and Chicago. Uh, Kwame uh, Raul, who's the AG there, is fighting to make sure that he can pick up where the federal government has left off. And I just think that and also some of the things the president has said about police violence uh, have not been very unhelpful. So, you know, we'll see, you know, bottom line is we need the federal government to be a partner. Um, local authorities in Minnesota have been helpful nationally. Jury's very much out on that. Back in 2015, you famously predicted the rise of Donald Trump and you were laughed at live on national TV. Have a listen. I remember. Anybody uh, well, from the Democratic side of the fence who, who uh, thinks that, who's, who's terrified of the possibility of, of, of President Trump, better vote, better get active, better get involved, because this man has got some uh, momentum. And uh, we better be ready for the fact that he might be leading the Republican ticket. Next. <laughs> I know you don't believe that, but I want to go on. <laughs> Sorry to laugh. Next hey, week, you know, George, <laughs> we had Jesse Ventura in Minnesota win the governorship. Nobody thought he was going to win. I'm telling you, strange things have happened.
Um, the polls, uh, a memorable clip there. The polls suggest Joe Biden is on course for a big win. Are we in danger of underestimating Donald Trump once again? Yes. Uh, I do think that the Democrats are much better positioned this year. And I think the efforts of the on-the-ground activists have been very, very helpful, and they've been robust and out there working hard. But, you know, I think there's a lot of people who don't report that they're going to vote, vote for Trump, and they, and they are. So I think the most important thing to do is to continue to organize, to get people to vote, to get people to the polls. I can tell you this, the confidence level of the Republicans and Trump is a lot lower than it was last time. I don't think they expected to win last time, but they were more hopeful and they were more insurgent. Now they're running scared and they're acting as if uh, they're desperate, which is why they're doing all this voter suppression stuff. But I think that in a lot of states where, you know, it could be, it's going to be tighter than people expect. So I think people better keep working. Folks, if you want to see Joe Biden and Kamala Harris at the, uh, running the country, you need to work very hard right through to 8 p.m. on Tuesday. Keith, just moments ago, uh, Donald Trump speaking in Rochester, Minnesota, addressed you directly, I believe. Let's have a listen to the clip. When large numbers of rioters and vandals sacked the city of Minneapolis earlier this year, Keith Ellison did not ask them to submit a permit. He told the throngs of violent demonstrators, by all means, exercise your First Amendment rights. Eh? He said that prior to them ripping down your city. Keith Ellison sided with flag-burning extremists over law-abiding Americans. He treats you like second-class citizens. He believes that the pro-American voters have fewer rights than anti-American demonstrators. Keith Ellison and Joe Biden want to imprison you in your homes while letting anarchists, agitators, and vandals roam free as they destroy your cities and states. Do you want to respond to that? I'm sure you do. It's simply not true. We've taken over 70 enforcement actions to try to get people to comply uh, with the COVID restrictions. On the left, the political right, all of the political spectrum. This is not a political thing for us. We are simply trying to save people's lives, including his and everybody who was at that rally. So he's... Uh, putting out a false uh, narrative there, and I'm very sad he's doing it, but I think most people know, given that we've looking at over 230,000 people dead, that uh, we're, we're doing the right thing. And, uh, with a, and I, I'm confident that trying to protect people is the right thing to do, and we're gonna continue to do it. And um, that's, just, that's just the way it's gonna be. Uh, we're out of time. We're out of time, Keith Ellison, but one last quick question. When he comes to Minnesota and attacks you and Ilhan Omar, both of you black Muslims, how much of that do you think is driven by racism or Islamophobia? I think he's demonstrated that he uh, does not have... Um, I think the, Trump, the president's a racist. Sorry, I just, that's just what I think. And I, I think he's proven it any number of ways. But that doesn't change the fact that I want to protect him from COVID and everybody else. And I wish he would just yes. abide by the restrictions. Attorney General Keith Ellison, thank you so much for your time. Safe journey home. Thanks for stopping to speak to us.